How many of you guys can relate to this? I've got an army, the greatest army, my orc army. It may not be my primary army or my secondary army or my third year army, but I've got it. They've spent most of the last seven years in my closet gathering dust, but I've been steadily tinkering away at it and it's made its way to 900 points. 900 points of a smattering of units here and there and no particular army coherency. Some of these models date back to Assault on Blackreach. Some of these models I got last year, but it's here. And I had to make a decision. Do I take it all? put it in a big box and put it up on eBay as an orc lot and just be done with it. I've sold armies in the past and actually it can feel pretty good to just get out from underneath the project and move on to other things. But I want to play the orcs. I want to collect the orcs. I want to play with this army. And so I feel like I really should turn it into an army. This force needs a lot of TLC. I think a good step one would be get them all onto the same colored base. I think that would be a good step. And currently it's 900 points. I rated my bit spin and I put together enough orcs to get this to an even thousand. At the end of this project, I want to have, I want to be able to truly say, I have a real orc army. This army is all infantry, a proper foot slog and wog, with lots of kit bashing and upgrade heads and bits. I have 21 classic squatty booty orcs, a custom Captain Bad Ruck, and 10 painted war bikers, my favorite orc unit and the reason I have this army at all. And nine more boys and a knob will get me to that nice round thousand points. I misread the rules for Kill Team 2018 and I thought I could take 10 orc gunners with big shooters. Turns out you can't do that, but at least I have them, so I figure if I paint up a couple of more regular boys and add big shooters to my orc squads, I can get three properly equipped squads going. And I actually have to glue these together. Right now, they are stuck together with some poster tacks, so I have to get them properly stuck. I glued the heads on with super glue and mixed up some green stuff to get the arms posed exactly how I wanted them. I find orcs very freeing when it comes to converting and kit bashing because you don't have to do a particularly clean job. Just get the stuff stuck on and painted green and it'll look just the right amount of orky. I glued down the green stuff with some super glue and while it was still wet, posed them just right, getting them onto some appropriate bases and ready to wog. The new orcs are just about ready for painting. Well, they're not the new orcs, they're not the beast nagas, but they're new to me, and they'll swell the ranks of this orc army nicely. Now, while I have everything out, I was planning on switching my orcs from the piddly little 25 mm bases to the big old 32 mm bases. Actually, I think when I put these together, Games Workshop hadn't even invented the 35 mm base, so it's time. Orcs are big, mean monsters, so they should be standing on bigger bases. However, at the time, I glued them all down with plastic glue, so it's gonna be a real pain to get them off of these bases. Luckily, I don't have to with today's sponsor, War Factors Tabletop Adapters, second generation. War Factor has been producing the best miniature base adapters for almost a decade now, and their new campaign has pushed this hobby tech to the next level. Their original base adapters use two pieces of plastic that sandwich together over mini bases. Their next gen adapters use a single piece of 3D printed plastic that hugs the base tightly, snapping on, redefining the edge of the base with one subtle seam that can be hidden away at the back of the model or sanded away for perfection. No matter what size of base you have or what you need it to be, War Factor makes the perfect adapter for it, with every size of round and oval base, and adapters to take square and rectangle bases and turn them into round bases. And for those of you gearing up for Old World, War Factor makes a movement tray compatible with the classic 20mm square base and holds your rank and flank minis as if they were standing on the new 25mm square bases. The 3D printing format of the version 2 base adapters means that customization is simple, such as adding text right onto the bases themselves. Whether you want unit names or silly titles, War Factor can make it happen. The campaign has many different pledges available, so whether you need dozens of small base adapters or just a few larger ones, War Factor has got it. And as the campaign reaches their goals, they will tool up the most popular base sizes for injection molding, bringing you triple the adapters for the same cost. War Factor's Tabletop Adapters Second Generation campaign is live now on GameFound. You can find it linked in the description below if you want to check them out for yourself. My orcs are now all standing on the appropriate sized bases. They're technically tournament legal. I wonder how many grand tournaments lets you bring 900 points of orcs, but it feels like progress. Now it's time to get a little sand on there. I have my orcs wandering through the Mad Max desert, so I slobbered on some wood glue, my favorite sander holder downer. I overlapped the new sand with the old sand so that there was not a seam where the new base meets the old base. Then I sprinkled on some large sand grains and finished them off with a dunking of fine grain sand. While I wait for that sand to dry, I think I'm gonna throw a little bit more paint on these guys because they're a little bit on the dark side. Not of the force, but of color. They're a smidge desaturated and it's not making their skin jump out like I'd like it to. So I wanna mix up a nice saturated green and put that on top. Ooh, I might even put a little bit of fluorescent paint in there. I think I have some around here. 
I wrangled up all my most obnoxious greens and mixed them with white and fluorescent paint until they were a nice neon glaze. I started to paint this on as another layer of highlighting on the top of each orc's muscles, but eventually I found it easier to just thin it a little bit more and paint it over top of all the green skin on these green skins. I think the fluorescent green paint adds a ton. It makes the skin a lot more vibrant. It really jumps out at you. Fluorescent paint is a lot more reflective than standard paint through magic or some sort of a chemistry. And the paint is naturally very, very thin on pigment, which is actually really good because I didn't want to cover up any of the painting I did before. I just wanted to pump it up a little bit. And it definitely did the trick. Now that my orcs are looking a lot more vibrant, it is time to add a few more members to the party. These new orcs need some love and I need to match them to my old orcs. Unlike most minis I paint, I started with a white primer to keep all the colors nice and bright. I had to give these models a dusting to knock the dust of eons spent in my bit spins. These nine orcs are going to get me to a thousand points and obviously the next logical step is to take this army to two thousand points and that is going to require a lot more orc bodies. So I want to do a little experiment with my orc skin recipe and try speed paints instead of just layering up glazes. First, some grim black on their orky pants. My orcs are based on the Mad Max War Boys, so black pants and belts and white t-shirts. To get those white t-shirts, some white speed paint, which is secretly a light gray speed paint. This shades the recesses and leaves the big open spots pure white. I dry brushed some gray paint over the clothing to bring out all of the details and add some wear and tear to the seats of the pants. And then it was time for the skin. Speed paint has a lot of greens on offer, so I figured I would give a bunch of them a try. I use a different paint recipe for every one of my orcs, so they all have a unique green complexion, starting with Orc Skin. It's in the name, it should be the best. It is a very green green. If I was going for a more first or second edition retro orc army, this would probably be the one I would go to. Next, a yellow green, and this is very yellow. It has some fantastic contrast, pooling nice and brown in the recesses, and makes the orcs look like a well-worn tennis ball. After that, a dark green, and this is a very dark green. It looks a little bluish. I think it looks great for a really wizened old orc. Then this algae green, and it is the exact color of algae, which makes a lot of sense for orcs, as they're basically plants, so a plant-like complexion makes a lot of sense. And last, and certainly not least, this gilly dew, which is a very bright saturated green, which gives great contrast and covers beautifully. The speed paint didn't give me as much of a head start on the orc skin as I thought it would. It pretty much just gave me a really good base coat. Although the gilly dew, gilly dew is like the perfect orc color. This stuff is really good. Also, I wonder if Gilly Dew is a joke on Mountain Dew, because it's pretty much the exact color of Mountain Dew. But yeah, this is some good orc stuff. Now I gotta get to highlighting. If you want to learn to highlight, paint some orcs. Their skin and muscles are so exaggerated, it's easy to see where the highlights should go. I mixed white paint with the respective speed paint colors and painted this on the top of each muscle, doing this three times, each time depositing less paint with more white paint mixed in. I try and speed through all the clothing on these orcs and keep things simple so I can spend a little more time perfecting the skin. On orky faces, I like to make their lips pink and fleshy. I think it makes their faces look more alive. A little pink, a lighter shade of pink to highlight, and then picking out the teeth with the white paint. And a dousing of Agrax Earth Shade to give a nice dark line to the mouth. Now for all the armor and weapons. Because I already have a white prime and did a decent job of keeping the colors in the right spots, I can throw one quick coat of silver paint over these metal gubbins. Then I wash them all with Army Painter Strong Tone. I like Army Painter washes over metallics because they have a more satin finish when dry and it doesn't dull the shine of the metallics. Now, the orcs are perfect. And you know what else is perfect? That's right, our Patreon. Over there we have terrain, orc terrain, in the form of the Orc Brewery, the unofficial sequel to Octaris, with new orky walls and a goth rocker stage. You can pick up this set through the EOB terrain tier on our Patreon, hosted through Comics, Games, and Things, or you can subscribe to our tribes on My Mini Factory. It's the last day to get this set for a discount, otherwise it'll be available to purchase. These orcs are painted, but a little too clean. I don't know many orcs who polish their weapons, so a little rust will get the metal properly tarnished. And to do this, I broke out the pigment powders. I poured a little into a cup and added some water to make up a slurry. And I globbed this on all over the guns and armor, being random and shoving it into the cracks where dirt and debris would have built up over time. Now the pigment powder is dry. It's got that nice dusty, rusty look, but it's a little bit too even. It kind of looks like I just slapped it on pretty much because I did just slap it on. And it pooled in a few spots that I don't prefer. But the nice thing about pigment powder is now I can come back and alter it. I wetted my least favorite paintbrush and began rehydrating the pigment powders and pulling them off the metal, wiping the excess away on a paper towel. I can do this as much as I want. I can pull all the pigment powders off of spots, push them around right where I want them. They're a very forgiving tool. Paint on the pigments, wipe them away and let them dry to see how they look, then give them another wet wipe if they need it. I really like how the pigment powders look, and I really like how quickly they are to apply. The only tricky thing with the pigment powders is you can't really varnish because varnish will change how they appear, but I definitely want to do some more experimenting with standard colors, blues, reds, greens, and actually putting them on the miniature, not just as like a rust effect, but just as painting and see what I can do with them. Now I properly have 10,000 points of painted orcs. 
I need to finish them and I need to finish their bases. Right now, I think their bases are a little bit too dark and a little bit too yellow. I was definitely going for a Mad Max theme, but I do think that the bases currently take away a little bit from the models. The models themselves are fairly bright, and so I think I wanna go even brighter on the bases. Almost a pure white with just a hint of yellow. I threw some warm white paint into my airbrush and squirted it on. I tried to be as accurate as I could possibly be with the airbrush, but here and there I oversprayed on the model. And that's okay. This is a dusty desert and it makes sense for a little dust to get into the orc's boots. Now the bases are considerably brighter. I was thinking of getting out the yellow pigment powders I used before, but you know what? I wasn't completely happy with the color before, so I decided to go with an Indian yellow ink. This is a very transparent color with tons of vibrancy. I squirted this over the white bases and they look positively glowing. And this applied much faster than sprinkling on pigment powders. I had a classic assembly line going, getting this Cheeto-esque color onto the models and my fingers. Heck yeah, Indian yellow to the rescue. It's definitely more than a hint of yellow, which is what I originally had in my head, but it's such a bright, saturated color on nice, even bases. I think it frames them really nicely. And speaking of framing, the base rims. Previously, I painted the base rims a desaturated tan, which I thought looked good at the time, but now I think just a classic black base rim will do the trick. Typically, painting the base of the rim black is a lovely little period at the end of a project, but this is gonna be like an hour of painting base rims. Oh, but then I will have a proper orc collection. A secret trick I can let you guys in on for black base rims is Apple Barrel 21985E Satin Black Paint. It's lovely, covers in one coat, and costs less than a dollar for a bottle that'll last you your whole mini painting career. Although I paint so much, I've gone through three. These orcs are made for walking, and that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these orcs are gonna walk all over NYX Blue Orcs. This orc army never really felt real until right now, I was actually contemplating getting rid of this army just because it had taken so many years and it all felt really mismatched, but now that it's all done, it's all proper, all the correct number of units standing on the appropriate colored bases, now it feels like I have a proper orc army. Does anybody remember the old Daka Daka forums where underneath your name you would put like your stats of which armies you have? Well now I could put under my Daka Daka account that I have one thousand points of orcs. And now I'm really excited to actually add to this army, where before it was just in the closet, out of sight, out of mind, now I want to add to it. I'm especially excited because now I know that I can use speed paint to get some really good looking orcs done quickly. I think the next step of this force is definitely going to be vehicles. Leave a comment below, what is that force for you? That force that's been sitting in the closet, just a couple of kits, barely put together. Because I challenge you, get that stuff out of the closet, get it all built, get it all painted, give it all the love that it deserves, and then once it's ready, take a look at it and see how you feel. Because I could never say goodbye to this orc army now. Thanks for watching.